He's also hosting Allen Iverson, The Answer, one-hour sit-down interview with Allen Iverson coming up Monday night at 8 Eastern on NBA TV. For those who never saw Iverson or played against him, how would you describe his game, Steve? I think um, competitor, uh, relentless, Dan, a guy that played, left his body out there, and then... I think a guy that you looked at and said, at six feet, 165 pounds, how is he doing this? Uh, and he did it every second that he played the game. And, and obviously, a guy that off the court, you get a chance to have all the conversations about who is Allen Iverson and why. But at the end of the day, he stayed strong on who he was, who he wanted to be, and that's why he's Allen Iverson. I think one of those guys that you're always intrigued to get to know more and more and more about him. Culturally, he may have changed the game as much as anybody. I, I totally agree with you, Dan. And I asked him one question. I said, you're a cultural icon and wait for his response. And it was Allen Iverson's response. He said, I am. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no dancing around it, uh, Dan. And that's the one thing you love about a guy when you're interviewing that. Uh, if you could talk to him for five hours, there was every answer was going to be totally the truth. And I think that's sometimes... Um, Maybe got him into hot water when he was playing at the height of his career, but that's the one thing I think people around him played with him, played against him, loved about him. The crossover, the, the double crossover against Jordan, did you talk about that with Allen Iverson? We didn't get a chance to talk about it but I, for me, but it's in the piece and it's, it's in everybody's mind. It's obviously, for me, Dan, that was kind of like, here's the coming out party for Allen Iverson because of the play like you said, the double crossover. I, okay, I crossed you once, Michael. <laughs> got you out of position. Oh, in the same play, I'm going to do it again. And then to recover from Jordan, just to look like he wanted to block that shot there so bad, oh, and man. he still couldn't, and Iverson knocks down that shot. They lose the game, but I think that was a coming out party, that play. I'm, I don't, has Jordan ever talked about that when Iverson crosses him over? No, Dan, I don't know. That's a great question. I would love to if somebody had uh, any okay, footage. But if, or... Steve, if you were with Jordan and you had a chance to sit down and talk to him, would you bring up that play to him? I think so. I mean, obviously, that's the one play if I'm talking to Jordan about AI, I think for sure. I mean, and also for a guy like Jordan, who are used to him being on the other side, you know, we're talking about the plays he made. Um, and I think for him is, what did you think of a guy, a six-feet scoring machine like you, you know what I mean? Whereas we know that position for at six feet was a traditional point guard that could score, but not a guy who had the mentality that I was going to score every trip down. He's Steve Smith, NBA on T, uh, TNT, joining us from Oakland after uh, game one. Why aren't the Steph and LeBron embracing this as a rivalry? You know, I, I don't think that is so much of those two as a rivalry. I think the rematch, I think um, it will get very interesting. Um whether who wins this series, if they can get back. Um, I think because the, they don't play each other, as far as I get those two guarding each other, I think that's one reason. Um, and I don't think us in the media, we bring it up more and more. We're not making it as a storyline. We touched on it, and then we go away from it. Yeah, but Bird and Magic didn't guard each other. They didn't play each other that often. No, but you know those two guys had that look why they wanted to destroy each other. And what's so special about those guys, they were they were friends, uh, not friends on the court. They respected each other. And I think because of the history they had leading up from college, it made it more of a rivalry. Yeah, I'd love to see them embrace that a little more, but it feels like, you know, they're trying to make this a, a team uh, rivalry more than an individual rivalry. But it it feels like... LeBron wants to show the world who's the most valuable player. Now, he won't necessarily say that, but I get the feeling that he wants to say, hey, Steph was player of the year. I'm most valuable player. I think, Dan, I think he wants to show that um, it's time for me to, once I keep getting to these championships, it's been phenomenal, six straight, that it's time for me to start winning some. I mean, um, it's obviously to have that, that, that record to be able to achieve there and get to the promised land. But when you're, you're two and four, I think next for him is he wants to have a chance to start to get some more W's versus just being two and five. Yeah, but you like, um, oh, I think I, we brought this up yesterday. Would you rather be two and oh in the NBA Finals or two and four? I would rather be two and four, 
But if I'm going to get there as a competitor, then I'd rather be 6-0. I mean, you want to get there and win. I mean, other than I would think last year, even for him, you know, he had to probably look back and say, wow, you know, my guys were hurt. But if everything is equal and you have that chance, which they do this year because everything is equal, I think he wants to win. I think you want to get there every year, and I think you want to win it every year. If we had a draft right now but with Golden State and Cleveland, who's first pick? Who's the first pick between out of those two? I, I think for sure I still take LeBron James as of right now. Okay, so if I, I think, take LeBron and then you take LeBron, I get Steph. Your next pick is? Uh, probably I would say Clay Thompson. Okay. Then it's up to me. I'm. Uh, I got you, Dan. Now. I'm probably going to take Draymond Green. Right. You agree with that? I would agree with that. Yes. So three of the top four players in the NBA Finals play for Golden State. Um, as where we starting to start our team right now. Yes, I would say far as starting our team. Yeah. And then you're taking Kevin Love or Kyrie Irving. I'm taking Kyrie Irving. All right. Because the LeBron James can do so many things, that's why LeBron kind of feels my point guard, you know, my power forward, my small forward, and then I have, you know, uh, Clay Thompson shooting the basketball. Uh, Steve Kerr breaking the clipboard last night. Do you think that that – do you think his t- team responded when they saw him break the <laughs> – I think he was embarrassed he broke the clipboard. You know, that I, I, you know, their clipboard, I, you know, I love Steve. I play with Steve, a colleague of mine at Turner – and that clipboard, I said, somebody must have had that as a prop. It almost it, it had. He didn't hit it that hard. But I guess as we got a chance to talk about it, before, he's done that before. But I, I think, like you said, he surprised himself. I mean, just a perfect break. He hit it right where you needed to. Uh, great for TV. But I'm like, wow. I, I want to see Steve do that again. We think that it might have been sort of broken. So when he hit it. <laughs> It was going to shatter, and then his his players would go, oh, my gosh, Steve is upset at us. I, I loved it. I was trying to see that he had the pen. Did the pen hit it or his fist hit it, you know, or the marker he had in his hand? But it was fantastic to get a chance to watch his reaction. And I love Luke Walton's reaction. That he didn't <laughs> blink. He just looked like, ah, uh, here we go again. All right. Uh, everybody seems to give us their favorite Michael Jordan story. What's yours? Well, I think for me, uh, you know, uh, there's so many. I mean, for me to get a chance to go up against Mike, I know just playing against him, um, just the chatter we had, uh, I, I, it's so many to go around. I'm trying to think of one. Is but there a cutthroat I, I, one? Is there one that's like, oh, my God. Now, he, he finger-wagged in your face. Uh, kind of to our team, yeah, Dikembe. I mean, we've had some, but I, I think all of Mike's is kind of, cutthroat they might have a smile but they're all kind of cutthroat um then he tickle you at the foul line or like he he tickled your hand i would say the one thing my rookie year i always go back to dan you know i got wind that he had played 36 holes of golf and i said there's no way you know what i mean whether it was true maybe somebody added 18 more but to play golf before a, a playoff game, whether it was the day before or the, you know, that you get a chance to come out. And I think we were going back chatter and chatter. And it was, I think he had three points after the first quarter. He ended up with 53. <laughs> I, I still can't believe he played golf and got and came up with 53 in the playoff game that we, in my rookie year. That's the one that still has me baffled and i oh i really God. wanted to know it was totally true whether it was 18 or 36 holes. would you rather it was 36 and he got 53 on you or it was only 18 and he got 53 on you i rather if it was he was just at the driving range i, <laughs> I hope he didn't play eight hours of golf he came and gave me 53 day what do you think was tougher his golf game that day or playing you and getting 53 you know, I, I, it seems like it was the golf game. If he played 36, <laughs> he must have not been happy with the first round. But oh, man. He was one of those guys that was uh, – there's a lot of stories. I'd love to have a sit down with Michael to go through some of his basketball, I guess, stories. Well, congrats on the uh, Iverson uh, sit-down that's coming up, the one-hour sit-down with Allen Iverson Monday night at 8 Eastern on NBA TV. Steve, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.